Hey everybody, it's Matt from The Pen Habit. Welcome back to another pen review. Now, I am a big fan of the TV show The Simpsons. I'm sure that comes as a huge shock to some of you. I've been watching The Simpsons for a long time. They've been on for a long time. For the first 15 or 16 seasons, I've seen most of those episodes at least a dozen times, and I'd be willing to bet some of them a significant number more than that. Uh, it's kind of what I have on in the background whenever I'm in the house doing things other than recording pen videos, as I've just got Simpsons playing in the background. And when it comes to the pen for today's review, uh, I'm going to paraphrase a line from one of the episodes in one of their later teen, or one of the middle teen seasons, uh, where Lisa says, congratulations, mom. I'm proud of you. You're like Christopher Columbus, disco discovering something that millions of people did before you. And that's kind of how I feel about this pen by Diplomat. Now, Diplomat is a German company. They've been in continuous operation since 1922, according to the people who provided the pen for this review, which is the U.S. Uh, Diplomat Distributors. And, uh, I am aware of the brand, had been aware of the brand, but I had never used any of their pens before. Um, and so I was excited to run into the di distributors, the U.S. distributors for Diplomat at the L.A. Pen Show, where they provided this pen for review and very sadly for me, giveaway. I love this pen a lot. So I, I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited to do the giveaway, but I'm sad because I would love to be able to keep this pen. I'll probably end up buying one of my own. Uh, in any case, here it is. Comes in this box, just standard cardboard box. You take the sleeve off and inside you've got a nice little presentation case. This is an aluminum uh, cover that slides off sideways. Inside, you've got this little Diplomat cardboard, which folds open to reveal this pen. This is the Diplomat Arrow. It is a fairly new pen in the Diplomat line, one that I like a whole bunch for a bunch of different reasons. Um, I'm going to talk you through what some of those are here, but let's go through the design a little bit. So, if I had to pick one shape to describe this pen, it would be Zeppelin shaped. So I, I don't think the name Arrow is a mistake when they decided to name this pen. I don't think they named it the Arrow by accident. Uh, this really does feel like it's shaped like a Zeppelin. And if I may uh, abscond with another line from history, oh, the humanity. So, oh, the humanity, this is a great pen. So start off at the top here. You have got a, a rounded, it's not a finial per se, but kind of a, a rounded area with the Diplomat logo that has been stamped on in white. A ridged body that, you know, kind of peaks, swells, and then peaks again. A, a nice matte black clip. It's very springy, but still feels solid enough that it would do its job holding the pen in place. Got the Diplomat name here, and then made in Germany. The finish is this really interesting anodized aluminum. It actually kind of reminds me of some of my cookware. It's almost like it feels powder coated on. Um, and I don't know a whole lot about the anodization process, but this has a very nice tactile feel to it. Very matte finish and not glossy at all. And then you come down to... The peak here, again, which has in a slightly lighter color and has that glossy finish to it. So the top, the clip, and the bottom all have that same finish, and then there's a darker, more matte finish to the rest of the body of the pen. And I really do like these machined ridges in here, which give it a lot of architectural shape. So it's a pop-top cap. comes off like that. Little side note, I've seen a lot of people do this, and let me just go on record as saying, I don't think it's a great idea. Uncapping a pen like this, slow, very small movements, don't just yank the top the cap off on these pop top pens. That's a real great way to create a vacuum and suck some ink out onto the nib or into the cap or all over yourself. Um, so if you're gonna use a pop top cap, very gently, just kind of pop it open you'll be glad you did. 
Uh, really nice long section. Again, it's a lighter, it's a lighter anodization, but it's got that great powder coated feel to it. Um, very smooth threads here um, into a metal barrel, standard international cartridge or converter, and it will take both long and short cartridges. And, uh, you know, inside is anodized as well to give you that nice stealth look. Section tapers slightly down to a little ridge here, and then the nib. Now, this is a number six nib. It is a steel nib, and it is... It's interesting because for the first while I had it, I actually thought this was a ruthenium plated steel nib. And it's hard to see in this light, but in most lights, the steel kind of reflects this matte gray um, of the rest of the pen and looks like it's that black, blackish rhodium plated color, which I like a lot. It's not, it's just standard steel, but you get that nice reflection. Plastic feed on the bottom and uh, very nice feel in the hands. It does taper down a little bit, so if you like a narrower grip, you can go down and go up. But it's a nice long section, which means while there is a step up here between the section and the barrel, A, it's not as big as you think it, you'd think it might be, and B, you'd have to hold the pen really high up to even notice it. And I, I never do. Now, this swelling shape here, I actually find to be really nice in the hand. Very nice, just kind of sits in the hand feel. Um, one of the more comfortable metal pens I've ever used in my life. I, I, I like this, the feel of this pen a lot. The pen does post. It posts very deeply, um, somewhat securely, not terribly securely. Now, the, this does have a, a plastic inner liner, inner cap here. So when you're posting, what you're feeling is the plastic of the inner cap touching the metal, not metal on metal, which is really a nice, a nice add-on there. So that is the design of the pen. You know, I've said this a couple times already, but I really like it. It's not your standard design, um, this, this Zeppelin shape, you know, floating through the air. Uh, <laughs> it, it reminds me of another Simpsons episode. Hey there, blimpy boy, flying through the air so fancy free. Um, you Simpsons, you Simpsonophiles will know which episode I'm talking about there, but I, I like the shape a lot. It's very unlike almost anything else that's on the market today. This stealth black coating looks just slick as all get out. Um, it also comes in a matte brown, which is really cool looking. I think I'd really like to get a hold of the matte brown and a matte silver as well. Um, the matte black is, is gorgeous though. I really like the look of this pen. Okay, so let's do some comparisons. Here is the Diplomat Arrow. Then we have the Mont Blanc 149, the Pelican M1000, and the Pelican M800. So if we move these down just a little bit and bring the 800 up, that's a lot closer in size, um, but still feels kind of fatty McFat fat right here in the middle. Um, and then for some less expensive comparisons, here's the Twisby Eco, the Lamy All-Star, and the Pilot Metropolitan. Now it's easy to see, I think, how this could be almost mistaken as a cigar-shaped pen, the, the, the arrow, when you compare it to, you know, pens like the Mont Blanc 149 or even the, the Pilot Metropolitan. That's a pretty classic shape, profile shape at all. But I feel like the proportions on this are, are such, and the ridges on, on the barrel are such that it gives the pen a very, very different feel. It just doesn't feel like your standard um, cigar-shaped pen. Now, in terms of measurements, you are looking at 128 point, excuse me, 140 millimeters from end to end. Uh, when you uncap the pen, it's 128.7, so still quite a nice feel in the hand, um, and the section is just about the perfect width. It's 11.3 millimeters, but it's variable since it tapers, so if you like a narrower grip, you can move it down. If you like a wider grip, you can move it up a little bit, but right here in the middle, it's just, it's just shy of 11.5 millimeters, which I think is pretty much the perfect grip. 
Um, and then, like I said, you can post it. It posts moderately securely, and you're looking at 158.2 millimeters when it's posted. In terms of uh, the diameter, like I said, it's 11.3 millimeters. And then because the cap and the barrel are flush, and it's kind of this cigar-shaped pen or Zeppelin-shaped pen, that's going to be the widest point of the cap or of the pen, and that is 15 millimeters on both the cap and the barrel. And then... Again, as you might expect, it's a metal pen, anodized aluminum, so it'll be heavy, but not the heaviest in the world. It's 30 grams uncapped, 42 grams capped or posted. The cap itself is 12 grams alone. So that is the measure. Those are the measurements and the comparisons, and it's time to do a little bit of writing. And now let me show you where this pen really shines. This is the Diplomat. arrow and we have a medium steel nib the ink is diplomat blue also provided free of charge by the uh, the diplomat distributor here in the US and here is the quote Okay, I, when I talked to people at the LA show about Diplomat, before I had inked this pen up, what I had heard was they've got really, really good nibs. Um, and I, I hadn't quite understood how good. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say this is probably in the top five steel nibs I've ever used. It's very, very smooth. I'd say probably on the Matt Armstrong scale of smoothness between one being hot butter on hot glass and 10 being writing on coarse sandpaper. And no, I will probably never stop saying that because I just think it, it's funny. Uh, I'd give this like a two or a two and a half. It's very smooth. It does sing just a little bit, um, but it's very well adjusted, very smooth. Not a lot of feedback good moderate ink flow, and I, I'll show you some of this stuff here, but it just kind of floats across the paper, just nice as can be. Now, you know me, I like my pens to be a little bit on the juicy side, and I don't think that's how they had intended this to write, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's not terrible, but it's also not the wettest pen in the world, um, which I think is, is really good for the majority of users who are just going to pick this pen up and, and play with it. P I think most fountain pens that adjust themselves to be uber wet right out of the gate are going to fail for more people than they're going to succeed because I don't think most people like their pens as wet as I do. That being said, this pen was wet enough that I never felt unpleasant friction between the nib and the paper and the feed was 100% capable of keeping up. And that's become my big bugaboo of late. I can't stand cartridge converter pens that cannot keep up with writing, a long writing session. I don't do a lot of flex writing. I don't do a lot of fancy writing. I don't even write particularly quickly. But you know that, that internet meme, you had one job? When it comes to pens, you got one job. That's to write. And if I want to sit down and write for five or six pages straight, I think the pen should be able to go all the way through that without me having to take it apart and squeeze the ink out. This pen stood up magnificently. Um, the nib is quite rigid, so you're not going to get much in the way of line variation. It's just, that's just not the kind of nib it is. So, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not pressing too hard because what's the point? 
Uh, in terms of reverse writing, you've got a reverse writer, but it's it hasn't been polished really on this side of the nib. It's actually a little bit scratchy, but it works just fine. Um, yeah, it's it's a really really good writer. I wish I had known about this brand a little bit earlier because I probably would have been singing its praises to people um, a lot more often had I known because I'm just really impressed with how well this pen writes. Um, which brings us kind of to price. I think the one, really the only downside I have with this particular pen is I find it to be a little bit expensive for what it is. Uh, it retails for about $125 US. It's probably less in Germany where this pen is from, but, um, but according to the, the places I've seen it online, and there aren't a lot of places that carry it, more on this in just a second, um, it is a little bit on the pricey side. Now, if you compare this to something like the Keras Customs uh, ink, which I reviewed, I think, in my last video, uh, it, it is a little bit more expensive, but not significantly so. Um, it's just as good a writer, if not maybe just a tiny little bit better. Um, and it has more of that mass produced feel to it. So if you don't like that, that more industrial feel and you want something that feels a little bit more designed than, than machined, this is a pen that will feel a lot more, I hate to use the term refined because that's not really the term I mean, but that's what I'll go with because that's just the only word that's popping to the front of my forefront of my mind right now. Uh, when you compare it to some of the other pens, let's say a Platinum 3776 or a Pilot Custom 74, this pen is going to be, I think, just as good as any of those pens. The exception being they've got gold nibs. This has a steel nib. Now, here in the US, the, if you want to do a, an apples to apples comparison, this pen is about $30, $35 cheaper than either of those two pens. Um, outside of the U.S., this, you know, you can get those, those pens for less, um, depending on where you are. But I find this Diplomat Arrow to be, it's still worth it. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of this one. Check on the Pen Habit blog in a day or two after this video post to sign up for the giveaway. Um, because that's what my reviewer code of ethics, uh, demands that I do. But I pretty sure I'm going to go buy one. I'm looking at the, the matte brown one instead of the matte black one. I like this matte black one, but that brown one's pretty slick looking if I can find it. Um, it's really comfortable in the hand. It writes really well, very consistently. It's a very moderate writing pen. It's, this is one of those pens where you're never going to, no one's ever going to pick it up and go, you know, sing, sing, oh, sweet mystery of life. It's never, it's not that kind of a writer. This is just the, the pen that you can rely on day in and day out that is a beautiful writer. It's with that pop top, if you're constantly capping and uncapping your pen, this is one that will probably work. I love the feel of this anodized aluminum section. It really is pretty spectacular uh, feeling in the hand. So yeah, a little on the pricey side for what it is, but in my mind, still worth the price. Um, May not be for everybody, but at least you know how I feel about it at this price point. Um, I, I think this is a really, really great pen and one that doesn't get anywhere near the attention it ought to for as good a writer as it is. So that will be my review of the Diplomat Arrow in matte black. A huge thank you to Diplomat USA for providing this pen free of charge for review and for the subsequent giveaway. I met them at the the D or the LA Pen Show, they are just delightful people, super friendly, um, and uh, I was really, really grateful to be introduced to their brand. There's another one of their pens, it's a green one, and you know how I feel about green pens that I've got my eye on uh, trying here in, at some point in the future as well. So, really like the pen, really think it's a great writer, maybe a little bit on the pricey side, and certainly on the pricey side for some folks, but if you're looking for a rock solid pen, you like metal pens, you like this dark matte stealth finish, I don't think you're going to do better than this Diplomat. It's a great, great pen.
So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm, I love having you here. I love doing these reviews. I love getting to explore these new pens and being like Christopher Columbus, discovering something millions of people knew before me. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun and it's a great pen. So thanks for watching and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit.